Oh yeah. Hey yo, it's the Russo Show. Hey yo, it's the Russo Show. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Pizza Film School. We are here talking to Mia DaCosta, uh, director of Candyman and uh, director of the upcoming The Marvels for Marvel. Talk a little bit about the cinematography and the production design are gorgeous in this film and they're very haunting. You're contrasting a real modern sensibility against Cabrini Green and the ghosts of the past and an older architecture. And you really represent that in the lighting, cinematography, practical lighting within the frame, production design. So talk a little bit about, you know, how you approach cinematography and production design. Are you sitting down and having, you know, meeting after meeting with your uh, cinematographer and production designer? Do you storyboard? Talk us a little bit through your process. So I love a keynote. Uh, so with my, with production designer and my DP, and I like to have them together because they're so intertwined, those, especially if you're using like practical lights a lot, or I just make up, like my DP gets probably the longest deck anyone, like hundreds of pages of just images. And I'll try not to pull too much from other films. I'll try to go to photography. So um, being a Chicago film, it was a lot of Gordon Parks, Vivian Mayer, um, and other like local Chicago photographers and just seeing how they photograph the city. But then also just like, like Vivian Mayer and Gordon Parks, just gorgeous artists. So using their work as, as a place to start for just like ideas for framing and, and how to draw humanity out of a face mm -hmm. um, and character out of a face that was really useful so I use a lot of those images from my, my DP and so I always start there and we kind of just talk about like the look overall and we whittle down those hundreds of images to maybe like 50 key images that I'll then put up in my office and because this is horror the genre side of it also had to be expressed so there was a whole section that was just like okay like how are we gonna do like seeing into the dark or how do we create an image where it, you're like like we're holding on it so long that you're worried something's gonna happen or or how can we hide things in, in the image? And so those are things we talk about. And then with the production designer, similarly I'll have um, a deck and all, everything that's in that is also in the DP deck, but this is like textures and colors and how they relate to the characters and how they relate to the arcs and how I wanna shift them as we move through the film. So all that comes together. And then once you're like location scouting and stuff, things really start to like slot more heavily into mm -hmm. place. We're like, okay, that's that so that Okay, we need to take that door out, change it to, to make it this, or we'll paint this, or we need to build this instead of shoot here, even though it's going to be the exact same set, <laughs> but we need access in these ways. Like, that's when we go from the like theoretical keynote to like, okay, this is how we're going to apply all that stuff to this, and then and then the storyboarding. Like, do you for, do your own boards, or do you have someone that you work oh, with? Oh, I cannot draw. Yeah, my handwriting's terrible. Ours are stick I, figures. Yeah, they're oh, terrible. I can't. Yeah. Even my stick figures look insane. Like they're <laughs> like it's truly horrendous. I work with storyboard artists. And I'm super particular, like on, on this movie, I went through so many and I landed on just like two who I was like, okay, you guys can consistently kind of, whatever I say, you kind of get immediately. Yeah. And it's, I think that's such a hard relationship to, to get right. Do you try to storyboard everything or just some key scenes or do you like everything um, laid out? I, I always like dream of being someone who can just storyboard the entire film and, and force everything around it. But like my nature is mo more to say like, okay, there are limitations in the space. How can we work with limitations? Doing a Marvel movie though, it's like there are no limitations to yeah. the space. What do you crazy. mean? Yeah. But that's kind of how like myself and, and my DP Sean work. It's like we find it in the locations, and you know, it's like, but no, we're building it. So yeah. I really leaned on my production designer uh, to kind of create certain parameters that then we could break or then stay within. Wait, I lost your question. I was <laughs> asking about yeah the extent to which you storyboard and oh, sort right. of plan um, out the movie versus yeah. you know figuring that, out on the day. Yeah. Um, for the Marvels, it was basically all the big like actiony sequences where I had to communicate to all the department heads like what the F we're supposed to be seeing or what's going on. That was storyboarder than everything else we kind of did on the day. But sh I shot listed everything. I shot list the entire movie. On Candyman, actually same thing with Candyman. I, I, I've never successfully shot uh, storyboarded an entire thing, but I always go into every day with a shot list. You run out of time eventually for everything. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like really just like, okay, we'll figure it out on the day. Yeah. Then actors are always like, I just feel like the window is hurting my soul. I need to go over here. <laughs> and you're like, okay, go over there. I actually love actors and love working with actors. I don't know I'm being so mean about them right now, but <laughs> I've had the best experience with actors. Um, but, do you, yeah. uh, speaking of actors, when you block, do you, when you, tech scout, are you figuring out where you want things happening or are you more on the day, let's rehearse and see what happens and we'll figure it out? What I've gotten to is sort of a, um, 
I'll come in and I'll say, like, here's what I was thinking for the scene. Like, here's why I would love you to start. Probably don't want to end up in this co corner because we can't cover that. But um, but let's just see what you guys are gonna do. I like to start with just like, here's what I'm thinking. But like, do, do whatever you want. And then we'll like block a couple of times, and I'll just kind of shift and change, and I'll watch and see if there's something maybe better, and see how they feel. And they'll, obviously, they always have like things they want to do or it feels right. And then I'll bring the DP in if he's not there the entire time, and I'm like, is any of this gonna fuck you up? Like, is any of this like anything slightly to the left that might be better? And then kind of get everyone. So we're all collaborating because I the thing I really find difficult is like if an actor is like. <laughs> not understanding that they're a technician, like right. that they're a piece in a thing that like has to be specific, like that I can't really, you look, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So do you like trained show. actors over method, quote unquote method actors? I like trained actors a lot, just because you can talk to them mm -hmm. logically and you don't have to like do like emotional manipulation, unless that's something clearly they need to get to a place. Or, you don't have to call them by their character name or, you know. I don't mind doing that, yeah. but like, you know, it's like you don't have to be like, I don't know, like, <laughs> abusing them like mentally like yeah. about something else the whole day so that they can be like sad for them you know take right. 65 exactly yeah i don't know i'm yeah. like no no, no. <laughs> like it's like that's why like i can work with children and but i i, I don't enjoy it as much because yeah. children don't know what's going on um although the kid in my first movie was amazing and i could just be like hey can you um be sad in this scene. He's like, yeah, okay. So what was I? What was I? What was I doing before? And I was like, oh, this this happened. He's like, okay, cool. And he could like ad. He was seven. He could like ad lib. Mm -hmm. And um, once I said, okay, once your dad gets to this point, like you're gonna run up to him. He goes, where? I said there. He's like, okay. And he put a mark down for himself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're yeah, amazing. Really funny. I it was I so. That. He was the best. Yeah. I loved him so much. Although one day he was being really loud, and I was like, can you please just be quiet for <laughs> five minutes? He goes, no. And I said, why not? He's like, cause I'm a kid. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, you wouldn't be a normal seven year old if you were two. <laughs> Perfect, but I don't know. I had this thing with my friend. She was like, "You don't like non-actors, do you?" And I was like, "I love a non-actor, but they have to be able to act." Right. Like, I hate the like, yeah, non-actors are in this film, and you, you know. And I'm like, "But if they're bad, right? What are we doing? Yeah, like, like what's the what? Are, like, what did we get out of it? Because because they can't. Act. I don't understand. So that's my like. I just want people to be able to do their jobs. That's all. Have you ever started shooting a scene mm -hmm. that you went, "Oh fuck, this isn't working," mm -hmm. uh, and then? Reblocked it and started over. Has that ever happened? Oh yeah, multiple times, 100. percent Yeah, and it's. I've gotten really used to just doing that in front of a room full of people and have and being okay with it. Because initially you just want everything to be perfect and you don't want to look dumb. But now I'm just like, if I have the right team around me, like they're just they want it to be good too. They're not like, oh god, look at this idiot, you know. So it's a laboratory. I mean, you're yeah, in there mixing exactly. the chemicals and sometimes you blow shit up and you go, all right, that didn't work. Start yeah. over. Let's try and mix these the chemicals this way and. Yeah. You know, but you really need that that freedom and that confidence yeah. to be able to go, oh, bad decision. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna try something else here. <laughs> I'll be uh, like yeah. uh Tara, who's my VFX yeah. supervisor, who just is, has great taste in general. I'm like, that was dumb, right? And she's <laughs> like, you know, I just you know and I'm like, it's yeah. stupid. Okay, yeah. let's do this a different way, you know, <laughs> yeah. like it's just useful to be able to And do you have that, trusted you know. collaborators that you can exactly. ask or to be honest with you about. Yeah. So, you know, you talked uh, really interestingly about the cinematographer and the production designer, but what about editor? Is it mm. is that different for you? How do you approach your collaboration with the editor? Um, I like the editor to read the script, like, during prep. Because uh, I, just thinking about transitions is really helpful and, and creating good transitions, I think, because that can be kind of lost in, the, especially if you're not shot listing the entire thing. For me, it can get lost in, in the process. So I have her, or Katrina, but now Katrina Evan, like read the script and prep, and then we just talk about like their thoughts, initial thoughts, and um, and Katrina's worked with me for a while, so she'll know the things that I always argue with her about that I always wish um, I had done. <laughs> so she'll be like, "Hey, there's this thing. I want to warn you." And of course, I always say, "Listen, we're we're not making garbage. Why would you <laughs> suggest that?" And then I'm like, "Why didn't I get that shot?" <laughs> and then I, I'm not really someone who likes to go into the edit during the shoot. I like to pretend. I, it's not happening, and I mean, I, I eventually end up going in there like once a week or so because they force me to. But um, I really, I like to pretend that all I'm doing is shooting, and then I'll be free. And then um, I take two weeks off, and I go into the edit, trying to pretend I didn't just shoot all of that. And I'm just like, do we have this shot? And they're like, you know, we don't because yeah. you were there. And I'm like, mm -hmm, great, great, great. Um, I have to compartmentalize really deeply. But do you like staying fresh for the assembly? You want to see the assembly, yeah. process it and then start from there rather than like going down the rabbit hole every day. 
I can't, yeah. yeah. Also, I love to just, I, I try not to work in when I'm shooting in the evenings and the weekends, yeah. unless, and I and obviously I have, but um, usually when it's a script thing, um, when I need to like write over the weekend, rewrite something, or when um, uh, it's just a casual like, oh, we have to change the way we're doing this entire sequence, so um, let's figure that out. Yeah, but well, I try to protect myself. As people much don't as tell can. you how physically and emotionally draining making a movie is, yeah, yeah. and if you don't preserve your, you know, health over the course of the film, mm -hmm. then you'll deteriorate and you're functioning at like. I mean, we've had projects where like functioning at like 20 percent by the end of it, and mm -hmm. you know you're just making bad decisions and mm -hmm. you're not all there, and then if the crew's not all there and you're working them too long, and yeah. you know then it's it's got this effect that uh, you know yeah. over the course of the movie that you could just see diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to protect yourself. Yeah. So I like, I love that, that you you protect your nights and your weekends, try to preserve your sanity. Yeah. I think it keeps you fresh for processing and going in every day. Um, do you plan ever for reshoots? Are you the kind of person that goes, look, I know I'm gonna get 90% of this right, and I wanna make sure that other 10% I've got um, some money. So I had a big ego about reshoots like when I started, but also I think it's just like being naive about <laughs> while making movies. Right. We were talking about additional for, for Candyman. I was like, listen, I think this is great that we have space for it. Uh, my ego's Bruce, that we didn't get it perfect like, in initially. And and then clearly during the Marvels, it's like they like plan there. It's already planned it's in. Like, just like it's built into the whole yeah. Concept, which right? and I love that. It yeah. made it's it's like makes it such a great experience because you just know like okay like we're always gonna try to get it right like yeah. and do better and like everyone who's made a movie unless they get Quentin Tarantino because he <laughs> has extreme confidence in himself. You always get to the end of the shoot or you're like halfway through the edit and you're like man I wish actually I did this this and this or like oh and now I see the story thing that I didn't see before. But even with him I don't know I've heard about his process I don't know much about it yeah. but I do know he'll go back. Oh really? Yeah. Oh I, amazing okay bless I, his heart. That's what I've, I've heard yeah, yeah. that he will go back and go yeah. like you know he'll refine something the next day or he'll spend days mm. executing until he feels like it's exactly what he wanted. That's why his movies are so good. But it's yeah. the, you know, like, nobody, like, the pro no prototype is meant to fly, mm. right? So yeah, yeah. it'd be crazy to think that, you know, you build the prototype and put a bunch of people on it and take off. Like, it, it, yeah. that's a crazy thing to do. So yeah. same with movies. Like, why is the prototype, especially on something the scale of the Marvels? Yeah, right? impossible. Like, yeah. I, I, you know, you're shooting for 90 days. There's bound to be something that didn't work out yeah. at some point. You know, you're exhausted or the crew was tired or... Mm -hmm. The actor made a decision that you didn't really agree with, and then, you know, you get in the editorial, and you're like, "Damn it, I should have stuck to my guns." So my, yeah. <laughs> I have still but, been there, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. It, so yeah. you're, you know, that the ability to refine has just become part of our process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, there's no value in, uh, in you know, um, thinking that you have to walk in to the edit room with a complete film. Yeah. There's that old adage that you, you know, you, you make it three times, you write it, you shoot it, you edit it. Yeah. Uh, and each time you rediscover the movie. Mm. Uh, we've just found over the years that, you know, there's been so many times on set where we look at each other and we go, nailed that, we just fucking nailed that scene. Mm. And then you get in an editorial and you're like, that is the worst <laughs> scene I have ever <laughs> seen. Word right, right, yeah. right? Yeah. And so it's mm -hmm. a, and we've, we've trained ourselves to go, all right, I know, we, we know that the intent here is for the character to be upset, mm. but the character's been upset quite a bit in the movie. Let's think about how other ways to express being upset. Mm -hmm. You know, then we start looking for texture and trying the performance in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't do a ton of takes, but we don't cut. Mm -hmm. And we tend to try something different every time. Mm -hmm. you know? you, so you don't cut, you don't? Not at all. No, because we don't like how the energy drops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we don't want people going out to smoke. Somebody's got to go to the bathroom. Yeah, so it's sort of, yeah. once we're focused on executing trap a scene. the actor. We yeah, want to trap really, yeah, everyone in that moment. Yeah. And we want to create energy mm -hmm. we don't even get up to, there's no conversations there's nothing it's like mm -hmm. okay do it again when mm -hmm. you get to that middle part you know just start mm -hmm. going a little faster from there yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're you're going to build an energy yeah as you go okay great go because we don't want them thinking about too much so we'll just layer in notes with each pass that we do yeah. uh and it's a discussion needs to be had it happens at the beginning before we go in and start rolling mm -hmm. or we get through you know five or six takes and something's not working then we'll stop and have a conversation about it. But yeah, what's your process like? Do you shoot exclusively on film? Are you digital at all? I've, uh, only time I shot on film is film school. Although to be fair, like I think my like my first like 
like black and white shorts are pretty pretty good. I look back and I'm like, wow, I really had a spark, didn't I? Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I just tumbled from there when I started shooting on, on digital, to be honest. I So I've only shot my features on, on digital. I'm hoping the next one is film, but I haven't told my producer yet, so we'll see how she reacts. Um, <laughs> I'm not a big like do a ton or takes person either um, because you just get to a point of diminishing returns for yeah. me. Um, I know some people kind of like, you know, it's like the Sideshow Bob thing with the rake. It's like eventually it comes back around to being funny mm -hmm. or eventually comes back around to being good or you've just worn them out and that was the whole point. But I feel like seven takes is like, unless we're just really fucking it up, that's sort of like my, my max yeah, kind us of Us too, thing. like you get to yeah. seven and it's like, all right, you're... <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's it's, uh, it's going to go in a different direction from here. Yeah, because if like especially if, like an actor's really in it, like I the times where I where I won't cut is when I need an actor just to get there, and I'm like, hey, let's go again and again and again and again, and I I really like doing that. But yeah, I'll, I I cut in between, and um, on on the Marvels we had quite a bit of steady cam or Trinity actually. You know, I'd be like, Simon, are you good? To like keep, just to keep rolling. Keep going, like, are you good? Yeah. Are you good? You know, and yeah. he was amazing. But oh, I always do rehearsal, and I end up rewriting during the rehearsal time before we shoot. Um, and I was really surprised that I had time to rehearse on on the Marvels actually. Um, but Candyman, the Marvels, uh, Little Woods, blocking rehearsals and rehearsals before we're shooting is so fun and so useful, and it just takes me back to that theater space, um, which I really like. Um, and then it also gives the actors like agency, like they had this space mm -hmm. and time to really consider character and movement and physicality and um, know that their voices are heard and appreciated. And I think that's really important for me and just getting everyone just on the same page. Like we're doing this thing together, like it's great. And I like absolutely hate going over. That's a big thing for me. You mean from a, on, a, on your days or? On my days, yeah. Okay. Do you shoot 12 hour days or do you do French hours? We did 10 and a half hour days, so like yeah. uh, semi continuous. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan so of 12 hour days. I don't think they really make sense. And it's I think so hard on everyone. Our lunch is crazy. And it's hard on everyone. And then like I leave when we call cut on the last take, and then the crew's there for another hour, hour and a half. So it's like, this doesn't really make sense. And then people are driving, especially if you shoot in London, like an hour to get home. It's just like. Um, and you're not living a functional life. Exactly. While you're making the movie. So it could be six months out of your life where you're not living like a normal person. Yeah. A 12 hour day doesn't mean you can interact with anyone or anything else. Yeah. You just want to go home and go to bed and get up. <laughs> Literally, you, know, you want to yeah. get your four or five hours of sleep mm -hmm. and go back to the set and it just creates a very different um, perspective and environment as, yeah. as an artist. You know, you st it just, I don't know, I feel like it doesn't feed you in the right way, you know, or the crew. Yeah. When, in bo back to post-production for a moment. When you're in, so do you like to just huddle up with the edit and be very uh, closed off with it? Mm -hmm. Or do you like to screen for other people, either people you know or? In my director's cut, I don't like to have anyone near it, but I love screening it for people after that point. Um, on this, it's so different though, because it's like, hey, can we see this whole sequence? Can we see this 30 minutes of the movie? Because we need to get VFX started. And I'm like, um, yeah, that's mm. tough. And so I kind of just had to disconnect, and I'm like, just take what you need, because at the end of the day, I cannot, like, like, you know the caveats, like, this isn't done, and I don't have to worry about. My, th my main thing, though, with not showing it too early is, like, I don't want someone to accidentally give me a note. Like, right. And because I, I just that don't have kind of gets in your head. Exactly. I, I have a tough time with that, too. I don't want to hear a lot of opinions early, because yeah. I don't want to, every time I watch it, be thinking about that opinion. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just try to get the movie to where I'm happy watching it. Yeah and then see if other people are happy watching it, you know? We were very cavalier early on in our careers about the testing process. We were like, who gives a shit? You know, it's like, it's funny or it's not funny. Like, yeah. it'll find its audience. But we've learned over the years, it's become very helpful because we dominating element of, of why we want to tell stories is because we believe in inclusion and we want to build community. Mm -hmm. Like those are two really important factors to us. Mm -hmm because we grew up in a big Italian family where we would all sit around a dinner table on Sundays, make each other laugh mm -hmm. and cry and tell stories about our lives mm -hmm. and share with each other. And it's such a powerful tool, mm -hmm. storytelling. Testing for us started to become this, you know, this way to create that or, or get a sense of, or get a barometer of, mm -hmm. are you building community? Are you being inclusive? Are, are, you know, can people follow it? You know, are you creating barriers of entry? for people uh, from the story, from a storytelling standpoint, we're like, you know, we, as we made those Marvel films, we, we, you know, we traveled the world to promote them and you start to gain perspective mm. and you realize like, oh, it's a luxury mm. for people to go to the movie theater 
around the world, right? We don't think of that in America that often, but it is a real fucking luxury. It's expensive, mm -hmm. and you know, and it might be the one movie that this that 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 this audience member is going to get to see that year. Yeah. You know, and uh, and so we felt like it was responsibility to make sure that there was something in the movie uh, for them. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, and so testing became this this way for us to gauge that. How do you feel? I mean, you're about to go into yeah. that process with Marvel. Well, did you test Candyman? Yeah. Yeah, we did one test before the pandemic started. Yeah. <laughs> and then that was that was basically. It. I mean, Candyman was such a different experience, and it was like, like so. It was a lot, <laughs> and. Yeah. Um, like very, very, very different from this, and um, uh, yeah. You mean like more a, oppressive from a? Um, um, it. I mean, I, I'll just say like the the subject matter is so much more. The stakes are higher oh. with a, with a movie like that, and so and it's more personal uh, in ways. It's more personal in ways like, and it was dealing with like a lot of a very painful, it's sensitive, very painful history, and so like being in that for a long time is hard, and then also it wasn't the process; it was mm -hmm. more the material. The process was di incredibly difficult as well, especially in post. Post was like a hot like uh, mess for me, <laughs> um, and but I think a lot of it is like really want to get it right, and you really have to be respectful to what the subject matter is and, and the thematics of it, and at the same time like there's like the Jordan Peele part of it because everyone's expecting like that vibe, but like I'm a very different filmmaker, but not just the vibe. It's like the critical and commercial expectations because his movies make so much money, right? And it's like I can't cater to that and also Do this. make a movie that's not, you know, at a certain point, like, it's horror, but it's also, like, black trauma, and, I, like, you gotta really balance that correctly, because you can't be, I don't know, you can't be, like, uh, trafficking it to, right. to a, like a gross degree. So, yeah. so that was, like, really tricky and difficult, and, um, and also process-wise, it was hard to just, um, for a number of reasons, but the, that previous screening was, like, really interesting. It was my first time doing that in that way, and then getting the feedback was super interesting, and, and it is a really great tool. I know a lot of filmmakers are afraid of it, but I think it's a really great tool when you're having a difference of opinion, when you aren't sure how something's hitting, you're not sure if something's scary, like that's that's a big thing. Yeah, there's uh, certain genres yeah. like horror, comedy, yeah. action, mm -hmm. where you are in a movie theater with a, with an audience, fresh mm -hmm. eyes on them, mm -hmm. you can really feel mm -hmm. how they're responding to the movie, you know? Yeah. Like did you, what did you, do, mm -hmm. do you remember something you learned about the movie from that preview screening of that audience? You know what's interesting? That actually was one where it just confirmed everything we knew already, um, which was super reassuring because we were just about to go into our additional. I had actually one screening, uh, like a big screening for Little Woods early on. There's a scene where um, the main character's probation officer comes over and she's like hiding, she's hidden drugs from him, and he like almost goes to open the closet where the drugs, so she hid the drugs, whatever, and then he doesn't and he leaves. And then after he leaves, she opens the closet and they just tumble out onto the floor. Um, which was a mistake on the day when we were shooting, but I was like, oh, this is good, and, you know, we went with it. And then we were like, should we try that? And we were like really hating that scene in the edit. And then on, in the screening, everyone gasped when the, the drugs came out, and my editor and I just looked at each other slowly, and we were <laughs> right. like, holy shit. And so, like, I'd nev we never had a moment like that on Candyman, because we just, we already knew what, what the fuck was wrong with the movie <laughs> and what was going on, but I love those moments. Like, yeah. that's fucking awesome. It's that's interesting, because cool. I feel like it's not, I, I haven't read the cards in years. Mm -hmm, I kind of mm -hmm. refuse to read the cards for mm -hmm. the same reason I want somebody sitting in, you know, editorial with us and putting a worm in my brain. Yeah, yeah. But what you get that's valuable is sitting in the room with an audience. Yeah, for sure. Right? Because you can hear them. Mm -hmm. Or they all get up and start to go to the bathroom during, you know, yeah. a section of the movie mm -hmm, to go, mm -hmm. oh. Let, let's talk about music mm -hmm. and Candyman. What was your process like on the music front? What, uh, it's a super unique score, and I love it. I'm super proud of the score on Candyman. Yeah. I fucking love it. So please don't fuck this up. I'll be fine. For me. Don't fuck this up. For me. That was one of those things where I could tell that like the execs were like, hmm, uh, yeah. you know? And, but it was because I was like, it just needs to be as unique as that Philip Glass score. And it needs to be psychologically disturbing, but also like a siren call in its own way. And it just, we just have to let it be what it's gonna be. And, um, and uh, our composer, Robert Lowe, like, he is a musician who does not make, like, the conventional, doesn't make conventional music, and, and he got the story, and he's, like, lived in Chicago for a really long time, and he, and he was just the perfect person to do it, so. My producer, Ian, actually, he was the one who introduced me to him at, like, the after party for the Us premiere, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool, nice to meet you, you know, and then we got to talking more, 
and then he sort of had to like audition basically for uh, the studio and he sent all this work and it was awesome and my editors had it when we were editing, I had it before we even started shooting and it just gave me a really clear idea of like what the movie needed to be and like where it needed to sit. And then from there we kind of just, just a lot of conversations like okay this scene needs to feel like this, like we never really wanted to do like jump scare sounds, there's mm -hmm. like maybe one in the movie. Um, so it's like, okay, how can we create a scary atmosphere and how can we create shifts that are jarring but aren't like, you know, the like violin, like, <laughs> thing that's like kind of typical to horror films, which I love, but I knew this wasn't, that, this wasn't it. And then there was a really great period in the edit where he was in the same house as us editing and he could come in, we'll show him something, he can go literally write something for it and like it was such a nice, um, awesome collaboration um, with him. And yeah, and he created this like beautiful haunting score that I think is such a, beautiful sort of response to the to the original film score. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, yeah, thank you. I'm, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's so great. I was like, and we've got to steal this for temp score somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> please do, please. Yeah. All right, so we always close out every mm. episode with something we call small bites. They're mm. like sort of quick mm. quick answers to quick questions. Uh, okay. I'm so definitely going to get myself in trouble here. Yeah. We'll kind of go back and forth. <laughs> mm. They're, these are softballs. They're mm. pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So if you could give one piece of advice to yourself, in your er early career, what would that be? Slow down. Okay, I love yeah, that. Yeah. If you could direct any other genre that you have not yet, what would it be? Hard sci-fi, um, climate change allegory. <laughs> I love that. Right. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> I feel like that's in the works for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I was like, man, what haven't I done? Like, I was gonna say space opera, but this is kind of a space opera anyway. Yeah. What do you think is the most important quality of a film director? Empathy. <laughs> Which is madness to me. Yeah, I'm like, right. I, I don't understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if you could shoot in any location uh, in the world that you haven't yet, where would it be? Somewhere super nice that I want to spend time in, like maybe like, uh, like the Italian Mediterranean or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would take time. that. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those just, you know, um, today my answer is kind of questions. Mm. Uh, who's your favorite director of all time? You know who I love? I've always loved, um, and not because I love every one of his movies at all, but just. I think he's brilliant. I, I love his career, P.T. Anderson. He just is like, I'm like, what are you gonna do next? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? His movies in the Valley. I'm just like, what is happening? You're crazy, <laughs> and I love it. Like, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah. sort of he's tirely, tirelessly ambitious mm -hmm. and and constantly challenging himself. Yeah, exactly. With a different kind of story every time out. It's amazing. Yeah. If you could watch, oh, we might be able to guess this, but maybe not. Mm. If you could watch any piece of content for the first time again, what would it be? I was literally talking to someone about this the other day and I cannot remember what it was. Honestly, it would probably be some comic book movie, like, like, an, but an early one that like, because I, because I'm a huge comic book nerd and I love them for a very long time. Probably like the first Spider-Man, like that was a huge. The rainy Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Fucking like the best. I like remember that entire night like of my life. Damn. I'm not sure. That's actually, a, you know what? That's a good what? answer right there. Okay. <laughs> my other one would actually be No Country for Old Men because uh, that's, that's a movie that I favorite. always revisit in the edit. Yeah. When I'm just like, what, what should we do? What can we get away <laughs> with and what should we do? And that one's always so informative. Um, that yeah. uh, movie for us is as good as Citizen Kane. Like it is so. It's better than Citizen Kane. Perfectly <laughs> I'm made. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. It is, it's just like every frame of that movie yeah. is so good. And there's no score, basically. Yeah, it's. What? It's, like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's yeah. muscular. But you mm -hmm. It's the Coens yeah. at their peak of their powers. Yeah. I mean, just some of the shots. I mean, that. Roland's running away from the truck and they're mm -hmm. shooting like that, you know, they got like four or five shots all at, uh, all at dawn, mm -hmm. you know, the way that they transition Into from day. night to day. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's seamless. You barely, you so barely good. notice the transition. Yeah. What's your favorite uh, snack from Crafty? Oh man, on this last one, it was Rice Krispie Treats. Yeah. Oh man, so I was, it was a real problem. Do you have like, a, we're the mm -hmm. same way we get habitual. Mm -hmm, when we're mm -hmm. working, like it's yeah. either like chocolate all day long, mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. the time. Dove bites. Oh, like we man. just we. I think we like cornered. <laughs> like we must. We bought out the whole Southwest. I think. Dove, dove bites. bites. That's, that's crazy. crazy. That's so. That's really like the scary ones when it's like small chocolates that you just keep. Yeah. Just pop <sighs> yeah. them all day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If you could work with anybody, alive or dead, who this would it hard. be? This is too hard. Honestly, um, I'm obsessed with Bong Joon-ho. And I'm not a good actor, but if he was like, I needed an actor, and you're the perfect person, I'd say absolutely. Because I just want to watch how he, like, how, how? I, I'd love to know. 
Do you ever think of just calling them and saying, can I come by your set? I just want to hang out. Oh, just hang out. Oh my God, no. Fly on the wall. Although Kevin once was like, you're like one of those cool directors now. Like, can you ask, uh," because I cast uh, one of the actors in Parasite. He's like, can you ask, uh, as long as you know about him? I was like, I'm not cool, man. Like, (laughs) I don't know, I'm like that, you know? Um, But I want to do that. I probably should. It's weird. It's like the best thing Mm. we ever did for our careers was Mm. was after Arrested Development. uh, So we've been at it for a couple of years. Mm. And I just remember thinking one day, I was like, yeah, nobody can give you this rule book like there's no set way to do this and we you know uh, were involved in such a way on that show where we were supervising some other directors to come in and you know helping with some reshoots and things like that and we were going oh my god they their process is so different than ours Uh, and then we thought what if we could steal um, sort of the best elements from directors who've been doing this Mm -hmm. for much longer than we had Mm -hmm. so we just started cold calling people uh, really famous directors and just going, hey, can we just come yeah. to set for a day and hang out? And then we would just watch their process and we would steal things from their process that, you know, we added to our process. Yeah. yeah. And it really uh, dramatically changed the way that we directed. I feel like <laughs> this is like my third movie in four years and I feel, which is why I said slow down. It's ridiculous yeah. and insane. And I'm like, I really should take a break and like learn more about directing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from You're other people. You do it. I know, I really have. Like, I really there, there is um, a, the only other way to do it is really to well, hang out with yeah, them. But like, yeah. go sit on one of his sets would be. Yeah. Mind blowing. I've always wanted to sneak on a Scorsese set for a day just to see. I've been on the Scorsese uh, set. Have you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to see um, how he works. I was peeing though, so I wasn't like, so tell me, Marty, how is yeah. this going? Actually, I will say what I did learn. So I, I PA'd on um, a Scorsese pilot, a Steve McQueen pilot, and a and uh, the Nick Soderbergh show. And what I learned about directing just from being a PA is like the way those shows are run completely comes from the top. The way people are treated, the amount of respect that filters down. Like I was on the Soderbergh show and a PA came into the office and they looked upset and the UPM's like, oh, are you okay? And they're like, oh no, I just kind of got yelled at by you know someone. And she goes, who, who yelled at you? Cause like, we don't do that here. It's literally mm-hmm. what she said. And I was like, yeah. nice. Like it just, yeah. every set was different. Like leading by example, that sort of thing really like, it was Im- impressed upon me through through that experience, but. Well, it's cri- again, it's critical because people do their best work when they're happy. Mm-hmm, I completely yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Uh, We want to thank you. Thank we you. We know you're in the middle of uh, your director's cut <laughs> yeah. on the Marvels. Mm. Thank you for coming in after a long day and editorial and sitting with us. Of course. And letting us uh, uh, grill you on your process. <laughs> Thanks for feeding me pizza. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, it also, you know, I had one slice of that and I wanted to take a nap, so no apologies. <laughs> Sicilian is, Sicilian cut pizza is like really, really tough for an interview. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, it is. Because the dough just makes you want to take a nap. So. Yeah, it's yeah. true. It's delicious, though. Well, thank you again. Thank yeah. you, guys. Good luck with uh, everything. Everyone, thank Thanks. you uh, uh, for listening and watching this week. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank